Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London again with another watch review for you guys and today we're looking at the Bimetal Daytona or reference 116503. Most of the reviews that I do, I start with a little bit of history behind the brand, but this time, because there's so much information on Rolex out there, I think I'd rather start with the history behind the Daytona model. The Daytona is named after a city in Florida that's famous for its big, wide beaches with compacted sand and flat, flat surface. The Daytona beach was perfect for setting land speed records. Since the beginning, Rolex has always been very, very strong on sports watches. And seeing this opportunity with Daytona Beach and the racing, Rolex released a watch in 1963 called Reference 6239, which was the first Cosmograph they released. This early version of the Cosmograph did not have Daytona Rin on the dial. It wasn't until 1965 when Rolex released an exotic dial version of this 6239 with Daytona Rin on the dial. This is when the first official Daytona was released. The 6239, 6241 and a few other references after that were named the Paul Newman due to the dial. Some of those early Daytona references are now serious collectible items. In 1998 Rolex released the 165 reference for the Daytonas and that gave us a similar look to this uh, reference that we're seeing today. Later on they released the 116523, slight update with a slightly changed dial and a few different more options. And then this year they released the 116503 in Basel 2016. On the bezel of the Daytona you'll see units per hour, going from 400 round to 60. This unit could be anything. For example, we could work out how many boxes I could pack per hour by timing how long it takes me to pack one box. For example, one box per minute, so it takes me 60 seconds to pack a box. I'd be able to pack 60 boxes per hour, as there's 60, 60 seconds in one hour, or 60 minutes in one hour. As I previously mentioned, the Daytona was made to help measure the speed or average speed of a car traveling along a one mile track or on the Daytona Beach. Let's say, for example, that the car took 15 seconds to travel this one mile strip, then its average speed would be 240 miles an hour. The tachymeter offers a quick and efficient way to measure units per hour. The chronograph is obviously the main function of the Daytona. Chronographs are usually split up into three subdials and a large second hand. The second hand for the chronograph is usually pointing to 12 o'clock in its neutral position. When we press the top pusher, this activates the chronograph and the second hand starts to move. The subdial at 3 o'clock shows our chronograph minutes. The subdial at 9 o'clock shows our chronograph hours. The subdial at 6 o'clock shows our small seconds. This dial shows the seconds as the watch moves in normal time. Now let's take a little look at the design of the Daytona. This reference 116503, which is the bimetal version, has steel and yellow gold. I think the bimetal is a great choice for a lot of people because the steel offers that everyday wearability and ruggedness, and then the gold offers a more dressier, smarter look to the piece. Being a 40mm watch, it sits pretty averagely in terms of watch sizes. I find it slightly small, but that's because I'm used to much larger watches than this. I personally really, really like this size and I think it suits everyone. I much prefer this 503 reference over the 523 reference because the bezel is so much crisper. The Bimetal Daytona is probably one of our most requested pieces. Thank you so much guys for watching our review on the 116503 or Bimetal Daytona. If you guys are interested in the watch, or any other Rolex watches, then don't hesitate to contact us with the email in the description and we can get you prices over and availability. Stay tuned for more watch reviews.